Okay, can we use Hardy-Weinberg on blood types? Well, kind of no. We can't use Hardy-Weinberg with ABO blood types because there are three different alleles. And Hardy-Weinberg is set up for there to be a P for the dominant allele, a Q for the recessive allele, and that's it. So it isn't useful for analyzing the ABO component, but it works fine for rhesus factor, which just has a dominant and a recessive. So that's what they're asking us to do here. As you probably remember, we have the dominant allele, big R, which means, yes, you have rhesus factor. That's a marker on your blood cells. And then there's a recessive allele, little r, which means you're rhesus negative or Rh negative. You do not have that marker on your blood cells. And then they give us some information about a population that they made up where 84% of the people have rhesus factor and 16% do not. Now, you probably remember this number does not do us much good, and I'll remind you why. This 84% is made up of some people who are big R, big R, and some people who are big R, little r, and we don't know how that 84% breaks down between these two groups. So if they give us this number, we're not happy. We can't get started with this unless we use it to find the negative people. If you told me that 84% of people have RH factor, I would think 100% minus 84% equals 16% of people don't, and that's actually a much better place to start with these calculations. We're going to start by saying 16% means Q squared is 0 0.16. And that's a better place to jump off, because we know if you're RH negative that you're genotype is little r, little r. There's no uncertainty if we start over here. So we have q squared, it's 0.16, and if we want plain old q instead of q squared, we square root both sides of this. The square and the square root cancel each other out, and that tells us that q is, you do this on the calculator probably, you get q is 0 0.4. Now, we know that P and Q have to add up to 1, so if Q is 0.4, P must be 0.6. This means if you looked, if you ignored people and just looked at, put all their chromosomes in a pile and sifted through them, you'd find 40% of their chromosomes would have little r's on them, and 60% of their chromosomes would have big r's on them. Those are the allele frequencies. And now that we have those, we can find any of these terms in the Hardy-Weinberg formula if we have to. So let's actually look at what they want now that we're all set. Once we have these numbers, we're in a good position, but let's see what information they want. What is the frequency of the Rh negative allele slash gene? And using that number, find the frequency of the Rh positive allele. Well, that's what we did here. The frequency of the Rh negative allele is 0.4 or 40%. The frequency of the dominant allele is 0.6 or 60 percent. Give your answers to one decimal place, done. What percentage of this population would be heterozygous for RH factor? That's this group here, 2PQ. 2PQ would be 2 times P is 0.6 times Q is 0.4. Uh, 0.6 times 0.4 is 0.24 times 2 is 0.48. So 48% of this population, almost half of it, is heterozygous, meaning they would have rhesus factor because they carry the dominant allele, but they're half and half allele-wise. Uh, so to the nearest whole percent, yeah, 48% is fine. 48%. Now, new thing. They say, how many people would this represent in the study where they took, took readings off a bunch of people? This is something new that we have not done before, and there are a couple ways to do it. I'll show you two ways to calculate this, and you can use whichever one you like better. They're both fine. First, we need to know the total number of people in the study, which is 1260 plus 240. It's a total of 1,500 people that they checked, whose blood types they checked. One way you can use that is to say 1,500 people times 0 0.48. 
and that will give you, oh, what is that, 720? So you can do that with the decimal form. Another thing you can do is say 1,500 people and 48% is a fraction. It means 48 people out of 100 are heterozygous. So you could take 1,500 times 48 divided by 100 and surprise, you'll get 720 again. Or if you like to cross multiply, which is an honorable practice, you could say 48% means 48 people out of every hundred are heterozygous. So how many people is that out of 1,500? If you cross multiply this, you do 48 times 1,500 divided by 100, and to nobody's surprise, you should find that 720 comes out again. All right, so I'm, I'm going to use a variety of these as we do the next several problems. I personally am a cross-multiplying fan, but all three of these work. Use whichever one you like best, and we should get the same answers all the time. Okay, so up here, 0.48 or 48%, or 720 actual people. Now, I need the space. What else do they want? What percentage of this population is homozygous RH positive, meaning homozygous dominant? That would be the P squared group. Right? This is one of each. This is the double recessives. This is the double dominance. So we need to know P squared now. Well, P squared is 0 0.6 squared, which is 0 0.36, or 36%. This time they didn't ask for the number of people, but just for fun, because we just learned this, let's see how many people that would be. If we do this cross-multiplying, we'd say if there's 36 homozygous dominants out of every 100, then there's how many homozygous dominants out of 1,500? Right? In both of these, here the 100 represents the entire group, here 1,500 people is the entire group, and this says in this little group, there are 36 people who are big R, big R. In the big group, there will be this many people who are big R, big R. And to solve that, you do 36 times 1,500 divided by 100, and that's uh, 540, if I'm not mistaken. Right. So they didn't ask for this, but that would be one way to find it. If you like the multiplying factor way, then you would say there's 1,500 people and 0 0.36 of them have the double dominant genotype and once again you should get 540 out of that. And finally, what percentage of this population is homozygous RH negative? This is a trick question, do you see why? Or maybe trick question isn't the right word, but you could do a lot of unnecessary work to figure this out. The amount of the population that is homozygous recessive is this group here, and guess what? They already told us what that is. It's 16%. We could have calculated it. We could have said q squared equals 0 0.4 squared, in which case we would have gotten 0 0.16 or 16%, but if they've already handed you the number, just hand it back. There's no need to do math unless you really feel like it, or unless they say show your work, in which case I guess you'd have to do this just to fill some paper. But most of these problems, they have to give you Q squared to get you started, so asking for it later is uh, they're just seeing if you're paying attention.